Hey guys, Toby Mathis, and today I have Tyler Surratt uh, with me to go over the state of conservation easements and uh, all the good stuff that goes along with this. Uh, we may even get into some solar, we'll see. But uh, welcome, Tyler. Thanks, Tommy. Pre pleasure to be yeah. here again. Yeah, so Tyler's been on before. Tyler, uh, why don't you give your background so people understand who you are and how you got into the whole world of you know conserving properties yeah. And, uh, and then we'll get into all the changes that have occurred in the last couple of years. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, long, long time ago, went to school to be an accountant, you know, thought I was going to be a CPA and, and things like that and kind of migrated towards a more active role in helping clients and, and being a part of that. So, you know, uh, worked my way up to being CFO, um, was a contract CFO for quite some time. Um, and then tax mitigation as a CFO comes into play and had, uh, met some individuals that were doing this type of strategy, conservation strategy. Um, and uh, about almost 15 years ago, um, and, and used it for clients. Um, and then ultimately just, you know, kind of put myself out there and educating myself on the subject matter and, and joining a group that, uh, this is, you know, what we do with some other for-profit investments. Um, and, and using the strategy to mitigate those uh, incomes and those for-profit stuff. So, um, you know, lots of lots has changed in that uh, 10 or 15 years, but, you know, um, most definitely have been a part of the goods and the bads. And, and you know, this is, this is where we're at with, uh, you know, 2024 conservation and inflation reduction acts and, and historics and all sorts of things. Yeah, so let's go over in a nutshell what a con so some people have never heard of a conservation easement. They have no idea what it is. Maybe they've heard about it in the context of Donald Trump and Mar a Lago and how he got massive deductions. But could you just do a thumbnail sketch of what a conservation easement yeah. actually is? Yeah, a long time ago, uh, President Reagan crossed the aisle in a bipartisan agreement. Uh, so we, you know, have a really good history of when the easements were created. But pretty much, you know, back then in the 80s, they decided that uh, the U.S. government could not preserve as much land as they wanted to. So they decided to incentivize people to privatize that preservation. So what they <clears throat> ended up with was the fact that, you know, people can develop the land or they or they can uh, not develop the land. And if they did not develop that land, then they would give them uh, a significant deduction uh, for that non-development and that deduction was going to equal what they could have developed on that land. And, and so, you know, almost a fair trade off, but also, uh, you know, uh, made it uh, a charitable deduction, um, which was a huge part of uh, the history of conservation easements. Um, but it was only a 30 percent deduction for quite some time. So you saw wealthy individuals using this strategy, you know, um, because they could uh, afford to buy land or you saw agricultural purposes for this um, in order to pay tax bills or deduct uh, high income years and, and things like that. Um, but uh, as we progressed um, in order to stimulate the economy, um, it became a part of the stimulus bills um, in the 13, 14 and 15 era. And ultimately, uh, as that stimulus uh they wanted to increase the deduction to a 50% deduction. So now it made sense for somebody who was in, you know, uh, who made $500,000 or more um, to begin to look at uh, this strategy. Um, and so, um, you know, conservation truly, in fact, is just the preservation of uh, land for uh charity purposes, I would say, or a conservation purpose. If you read in the tax code, it's, it's watersheds, it's pleasure for enjoyment. Like it's a, it's a lot of things and can qualify for a lot of things, but it's, it's basically, you know, undeveloped land that will remain undeveloped for quite some time that somebody got a tax deduction for doing so. So, so I grabbed the IRS conservation easement audit technique guide, uh, <laughs> I always like to look at how the IRS is viewing things. Right. And so they're saying that the easement must be granted in perpetuity exclusively for, like you just spelled out, for one of the following purposes. Number one was to preserve land for public recreation or education. Number two, to protect a relatively natural habitat of fish, wildlife, and plants. 
Three, to preserve open spaces, either for public scenic enjoyment or according to a governmental conservation policy that yields a significant public benefit. Or number four, to preserve a historically important land area or a certified historic structure. So in English, right? You, you, you take this thing and just tell me if I'm wrong. Let's say that I have land. I could develop it or I want to preserve it, but I want to get a tax benefit per, for preserving it. I could preserve that land by giving a grant, let's say to Ducks Unlimited or one of these big groups. I could give them an easement in perpetuity for, for, for the use of that property or that will never be developed. Right. And I get a tax deduction based on the fair market value of that value of what it would have been. So if the development value is $10 million and uh, because of what I'm giving, it's worth a million, I would get the, I would get the $9 million deduction. Is that accurate? Or? Well, you actually get the $10 million deduction, but it would cost you the million dollars to be able to. There you go. Like kind of a high multiple if you want to read in your audit technique there like that multiple is not going to qualify <laughs> yeah and then because it's over five thousand bucks you got to have a qualified appraisal right. and i think that's where we get into the trouble right yeah. so 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 let's let, do you want to explain mar-a-lago or do you want like that's always a fun one like donald trump's done this on his golf courses right, right. he said basically it, you can't it, develop it's famous it. for using them too i mean Ranches all over in Montana, Colorado, and, and places like that, like, you know, it just secures, uh, you know, and, and granted, like, when those guys were doing it, like, uh, it was a um, a wealthier individual type strategy, you know, like, mm -hmm. it is what it is, and, and nobody's going to go back, statute li limitations exist for, for those types of things, I could tell you right now, maybe... Uh, you know, the development that they're do at Mar Lago and things like that would would not fly with the IRS or, or that type of deduction would not, you know. Uh, they're contesting. Yeah, they're contesting a lot of yeah, the appraisals yeah. and they were really attacking. They, they've ultimately lost this, by the way. Like my understanding is that they were doing the Chevron where the federal government is able to say, here's my policy. And then they also had. I believe it was regs that they said they didn't go through the proper steps, but they were they were requiring certain language in a in a deed in perpetuity, and they were denying deductions based off of the lack of that language. Were, and uh, well, they didn't what pass. What they were doing was creating um, a, a a legal battle on on little things, and and basically exhausting audit funds and and investor you know interest forcing them to uh, find a resolution or to settle uh, mm -hmm. some sort of audit case. So, you know, that case, what you're talking about specifically, um, you know, I think the IRS did lose and, and, and now they have to have some relevant purpose towards value um, mm -hmm. and other uh, aspects of audit in order to venture into a deal. They could still go after the bad guys, right? And so, like, yeah. let's oh, yeah. let's yeah. set the table here. So, the proper use of a conservation easement, because you've been doing this a long time. What was the proper use, and why were investors doing that? Uh, well, let let specifics like let's uh, set some ground rules here. You know, like you know, if we're gonna talk audit and audit technique and and maybe IRS avoidance tax uh, avoidance of audit. Um, you know, there's, there's a few steps that I always suggest, you know, people look at who do the strategy and, and one is, you know, obviously conservation purpose, like what is the true purpose? Like, you know, um, where does this land lie? Like, what's the location? Like, are we in a highly developing area? You know, are we really trying to preserve the watershed or are we really trying to preserve, you know, some sort of access to trails or, or, you know, is it just the last remaining piece in this, in this fully developed neighborhood that, that, you know, would ruin the beauty or whatever. Um, so, so one is, is, is that like, you know, what is the, the purpose? Um, mm -hmm. The second one would, would be uh, timing, you know, like, can this land be developed today? Because essentially you're looking for a deduction that happened this year. 2024, right? Like Fair market talking, if you invest in something, Toby, and, and it's not going to be developed for five years, why are you investing in it? Because you're basically just ruining your cash flow or your liquidity yourself and, and you know, uh, not 
I tend not to look at invest, you know, like people want easy returns. Um, and so, you know, timing, like if, if something's not going to be developed or in danger of development for 15 years or 10 years or, or things like that, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's what they meant by, you know, preserving today. Like, let's save that for tomorrow. Um, and then obviously value, like what, what do you see in the value? Like, I mean, is it surrounded by homes? Is it surrounded? Uh, I always use the example of central park. No idea if central park is a true conservation or not. Maybe it is. Um, but, uh, I should look that up one day. Uh, cause I use the example and I'm like, you know, just take a example of central park. What is it's worth to the state of New York or, or just to New York city itself. And it's like, but if somebody could develop something on it, like look around, like it's literally right across the street, like office buildings, parking garages, you know, um, homes, condos, things like that. Like that, that's what we're talking about of values. Like we're not talking, you know, something that exists, you know, um, states away, or you're trying to compare a, a development, you know, that, you know, hasn't been done or, or, you know, they're, like I said, it kind of goes along with location um, and, and purpose is like, you know, like what's around it. Like, I mean, we've done fourth phases of developments. We've done, you know, um, highly developing areas in, in, in year after year after year, we've remained in the, in, in the same spot because of the, the purpose of, of that development and the conservations there. Um, so, you know, th- those three things right there, I think is, is what you're looking for as an investor in a conservation. So you're doing it, you're going to get a tax deduction, but you're doing it for the conservation, not just because of the tax deduction. Right. Because that tax deduction is going to be based on the appraisal and the, and the IRS has been contesting these. Let's just be straight up is that there's some bad actors out there where they were just doing ridiculously high valuations. So if an investor put in a dollar, they were getting a $15 deduction, which yep. is just crazy, yep. right? Um the IRS has now come out and said, what, the maximum amount you can get is two and a half times. So of the base. So, you you, you know, so if you put a buck in. The final right. has clarity towards rules. Typically, it was towards audit, you know, and you had to follow audits and, and guides of what the IRS was making rules on or defining as they went, uh, which is not a bad mm-hmm. thing. Let's let's just keep in mind, like, you know, people were. Uh, creating lands in the middle of nowhere and taking really cheap things and making significant deductions. That's not fair. Right. You know, like that's not what the purpose of the, of the law was. So um, what you have then, you know, like I said, is um, the IRS is, is looking um, for something that uh, has some sort of value in, in, in the place that it's in. Um, and, and when they are looking at that, um, they are trying not to, they're, they're, they're chasing the bad actors, you know, mm-hmm. for, for those purposes in general. So the limitation, so two and a half times the basis. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's what we are getting to is the two time limitation is so, so now we have some clarity. The IRS, like I said, was, was auditing and then we were following the audits, but then the inflation reduction act came out and they successfully changed rules. Yeah. So the, that's so that change came from a two and a half times limitation of, of conservation of true conservation efforts, which matched, you know, like uh, what the tax break was, you know, like if you're, if you're talking two and a half times your investment um, you know, you're pretty much exchanging tax for conservation, which is, which is a great purpose in general. Um, they did leave uh, a couple doors open for us um, and, and for, people that actually wanted to do it correctly. And that clarity exists in, in three purposes. So you can bypass that two and a half times limitation. Um, if you're a closely held family partnership, uh, like I always say, think Yellowstone, think family farms, think uh, people like that. You're conserving your own property. So I own property and I see this thing where they say, hey, two and a half times limitation of basis for conservation easement, that's out the door. If it's your property, you could still do a conservation. Well, and brothers, right? Like that's a that's a, a group effort. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's our 
farm. My grandpa left us this. We're all part of this LLC. It makes money. You're a lawyer. I'm an accountant. You know, like we have this passive thing going on. We're trying to mitigate, you know, this extra stuff that's going on. So that that's the group aspect of, of family. Um, and then uh, the second the second one was more of what you're talking about, the individual aspect. Like I own a piece of land. I've been a farmer for years. It's just me. You know, I've owned this land for more than three years. Now I can create some sort of conservation on that land to be able to help like what I'm doing, because, you know, I, I'm holding a purpose, you know, in America and, and preserving my land and, and my rights and, and leaving things for legacy is, is what I want to do, uh, because that's my largest asset is, is land. Um, so that's more the individual aspect. And then the, the third aspect, um, I think they left open for the public, but also created a, a good a good purpose uh, and a good niche um, for, for that. And that is uh, it has to contain some sort of historic aspect and there's qualifications for historic. And, and the main qualification that you should be concerned of is, is national registry. Mm -hmm. Like, is it on a national registry? Like um, is that property on a national registry? And when I say, did you, um, or, or they created a good niche is because not a whole lot of historic properties now continue to hold significant development value, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and so those properties are, are few and far between. Um, and, and I don't think they meant- We're talking like museums and stuff. So like you have a historical house that was owned by somebody of prominence and it's being maintained. They make it into yeah, a museum. They, now you could syndicate that and you could preserve it and operate it and you're going to get a deduction yeah. based on it. <laughs> be a part of that and you can you know like you know it's something that may or may not be on the registry or something that has maybe the buildings on registry but the land attached to it um it doesn't isn't uh the land's on registry but it doesn't have any uh building restrictions just the the uh for sure uh set structure so so that preservation of the historics of america now comes into play um and i, I think they created a good purpose they defined some rules um, they created limitations to where not everybody can participate um, because it is a difficult, you know, when you talk uh, barriers to entry and, and things like that, like, you know, it does take some significant research and, and, and those types of uh, knowledge to be able to, to obtain, obtain this stuff. So they've really secluded that bypass of the two and a half times. Otherwise just take your two and a half times. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I mean, you're going to conserve a property and, and you're not going to pay tax, but you're also going to contribute the same amount that you would pay tax. There's nothing wrong with that. And there are plenty of people doing that. And and you will be thankful for them as 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 we there's an incentive. Uh, yeah, there's an tax. incentive so that if I'm somebody who's let's say I make a million bucks a year and I'm in a high tax state. Right. So I may be paying 45, 50 percent tax. And if I can donate a dollar and get a well, probably four to five times deduction, is that about right? Or am I? Uh, yeah, uh, keep it uh, keep it in between the fours. Yeah. And, and let's just and say closer to four. Five. I feel comfortable. A normal yes, a normal real estate return, like because it is what it is, is a real estate deal mm -hmm. that you and I choose to then concert. Mm -hmm. You know. We have looked at this as development. We know that we can make four times our money. We also know that value can come back to us in a deduction. Let's use this property here to mitigate taxes. Where Let's we're use easy numbers. Let's here. just say I get a dollar and I get a $3 deduction. And that $3 deduction right. for each dollar that I'm able to reduce is saving me 50 cents. So saving me a buck 50. So dollars saving me a buck 50. I'm spending a dollar, I'm getting back a buck 50. So I get a little bit of benefit, but the real thing that we're doing here is 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 conserving historical properties right so there's that little niche otherwise it's two and a half times so if i put the same scenario i do a dollar i'm going to get a two dollar and fifty cent deduction it still may be worth it but a lot of people are saying man I, there's a risk the irs has been hammering these things and uh i don't want to take that risk and i get it or again you may not be in a high tax state uh you may be in a state where the where they don't recognize the deduction. 
Uh, like, right. so you may be looking at 37% federal or maybe you're in a lower okay. bracket, you're at 32% federal and you're like, all right, it doesn't really, yep. like, I just want to conserve. It's really not making any benefit for me. Are there things that I could invest yep. in to help the, you know, to help preserve space or to preserve land without costing me a whole bunch, you know, maybe I get some yeah. benefit. Well, and, and like you said, like, you know, um, well, uh, that is a good example. Somebody that makes a million dollars, you know, uh, you can go up to 50% of that million dollars. Okay. Let's say I'm a, a doctor, you know, and I'm making a million bucks or close to, you. um, I don't have a whole lot of options for deductions. You know, I begin to look at real estate. I, I look at some other things, but you know, the significance and, and savings isn't there, but my, my wealth grows with my real estate. Um, but you know, I also want to contribute to something of meaning. So I contribute to a historical conservation easement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, and, and so let's say I'm in a high tax state, California or whatever, my highest tax bracket with state is 50%. So of that $500,000, like let's say I get a four to one and, and so I'm going to contribute $125,000, uh, to, um, this LLC, this real estate deal, um, and, and seeing the development potential, uh, knowing that I can get a four to one for my money. Uh, they put a vote out that says, Hey, you know, do you want to conserve or do you want to develop? And, you know, I want to conserve. I make money doing something else. I don't want to make more money. I'm looking for a tax break. Sure. I want to conserve. And now I'm getting a, uh, a $500,000 deduction. And so I should have paid two fifty on this money. Essentially I paid 125 to the investment and, but I should have paid the IRS 250. Um, and now I've saved $125,000. So hopefully, you know, with that, now I can go venture into real estate and, and, and do so with some liquidity and things like that. Like it's, it doesn't go without say that this doesn't have ripple effects for people that are saving money that continue to reinvest in America. I, I think that, you know, um, distinction sometimes is, is people are getting a tax deduction, but you don't realize when people get some sort of tax deduction, you're reinvesting somewhere else. And you, even if you were to give a dollar for dollar charitable donation, like you're investing in a church, you're investing in a Salvation army, like you're doing something with that money that, that is helping other people. And I think that's the point where we, we got, we lost it there, right? But 2015, they switched it and they made it up to 50% of adjusted gross income and it became such a large tax right. play. I mean, I'm guilty of this. I, I would talk about it every year as being in your tax toolbox of things that you could deploy by the end of the year to, you know, to do. I, I think our first, first podcast was 2016 and, and we spoke of some things that are no longer Can't do it. valid. IRS said, right. we hate it. They attacked it. Congress changed the law and said, because there were so many bad actors, so many, like yep. we, I never saw a deal that was crazy. Like I think the, the biggest one I saw was four and a half to, to one or something like that with, with, uh, with some of the people. I, I saw, I saw eight to one, huh. like I did see an eight to one. Um, I have people right now that I speak to, about conservations that are still interested in the strategy, but are dealing with the consequences of those investments yep. um, back then. Um, and, and they're not kind, like, you no, know, and, and we're talking, we're talking seven years later, we're 2024 and, and you and I are speaking of a period of abuse before the IRS began to attack these things and, and made people wary of them. Um, and so seven years later, now these people are realizing consequences for, for a decision they made back then, you and know, that, 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 that's the breaks of this, you know, once an audit's open, it's open. And, and unless there's some sort of settlement or some sort of agreement, like you kind of have this looming over your head and, and the IRS is not looking, well, I, I don't want to say what they're looking or not looking for, but easiest thing to do uh, for investor and IRS is to settle because, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately belabor these things. It's With, tax they, they were attacking the valuations almost always. Like, and I think that yeah. they still have grounds to do that. It's just really attack yeah. purpose. Uh, and, and that's where they win is, is you took a piece of land in the middle of nowhere, Georgia, right. Mm -hmm. And, and claim some sort of astronomical value. There's not even a road, 
or water to this property or the value you're claiming, which are, are mineral type rights, which the IRS now defines in, in the new IRC um, as invaluable, um, the, the mineral rights that people were claiming, you know, there wasn't even mineral rights. There wasn't even the threat of mining in the, in the specific county or even the state that they were preserving in. So the valuation was maybe two or three states away. Oh, this type of mine exists in Alabama. It's not really in Georgia. Um, so, so true purpose. Like what was the conservation of that property? They were like, just playing game. The fact they were just, it, it was pure tax. Ray. $10 an acre. It didn't have any substance. <laughs> yeah. You you saw those and, and rightfully show those, those, they should be torn apart. Oh yeah, no, and that that's but people didn't know, you know, like I mean that was what the market gave them, um, and they invested, and they didn't know, they didn't do their due diligence, and and now, uh, you know, due diligence is is very much encouraged. Like I said, if you can't see value across the street, or you can't find value, you know, within a mile of of the property that you're looking at, then neither can the IRS. The IRS can't see the purpose either. Then you know, and, and so that that's really a due diligence uh, item that somebody should be. But a at. true conservation easement still works. There's a limit. The historical preservation has no limit and it still works. Conservation easements for private individuals still work without a limit. So long as they're meeting the requirements underneath the, 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 yeah. the, the right. tax. Yeah. yeah. There, there's, and, yeah. It, and, and Tyler, if somebody's interested in talking to you about this, this is like, all I can talk about is the tax strategy. I can just say, hey, right. here's the tax benefits right. you can give to charity, you can give to a conservation easement. Uh, it's up to you. But the, the the whole point of both of those is the purpose of it. So you got to have a charitable or conservation purpose. And uh, but there is tax incentives. There are tax incentives there for individuals. How would they get a hold of you? I mean, can I just put your link in the in the in the show notes? You can put my phone, you know, like uh, and. and that's how open I am in, in, in thinking that this strategy does work if it's done correctly. Um, so, you know, 719-580-3051, you're welcome to call and or text me. Yeah. Um, and my, my email address, you know, tsurat, S-U-R-A-T, at, or sorry, at One Tree Advisors, uh, O-N-E, Advisors with O, um, dot com. I'll put it in the show notes uh, so that they can just... They can, yeah, yeah. Put it in the notes, but you know, it's something that is very individual based. Like, you do have to understand the strategy. You do have to meet certain requirements. It doesn't make sense for everybody. Um, you know, there still is a risk. Um, RS, you know, even even today, like you know, statute of limitations is three years, and and they're still interested in in looking for something that that makes sense to them. That's their mm -hmm. job, you know. But most definitely the new rules have helped them mitigate uh, the fact that they have to look at everybody, you know, because, uh, you know, they, they do have some and now, you know, like looking at something of significance, like, you know, is, is their goal. And, and rightfully so. Like, I've always said that, uh, always believe that, like people who do things uh, wrong, mm -hmm. like should should push in, in the areas that they do things wrong. But you know, as an investor, they were going like, after some good deals based, though, too. Like they were just, they were trying yeah. to find a technical reason. Oh, you didn't put this magic language in that. We just decided after the fact that you need to have it now. Now they're being told, no, that doesn't work. So they're going to have to go back and look at those claims again. They can't just get rid of them. If somebody wants to get a hold of Tyler, you can absolutely do so. Reach out yeah. under there. Right. Uh, also, if you want to share this with anybody that's been doing conservation easements or, the, you know, you're, they're wondering what's going on. This is an easy, uh, like, you know, 20 some minutes uh, explanation of what's going on. It's I, I know that it's not the simplest code provision or to th get the, to get your mind around. Uh, but I think you break it down pretty easily, Tyler. And then it's fact specific. So, I would, you know, if somebody wants to reach out to you and have you look at their scenario that I'm sure that uh, you can get Yeah, it's very, very deal specific. It's very, you know, um, personal uh, significance and, and, and specific. So, you know, not taken lightly. There's still people doing it wrong. There's still people doing it right. Like, and, and you know, uh, open and welcome to look at the things you're looking at and, and maybe suggest some other things that, you know, you should be looking at, but ultimately, you know, 
no, like a, a passive investor or, or somebody that doesn't, uh, you know, we all, we all make that mistake, but you know, you shouldn't be punished because you've trusted somebody. And so just 10 more minutes or an hour long or something like that, like does make sense in, in this type of, you know, strategy to be able to look into it a little bit more and a little bit harder, but one, it's still in the tax code. It is still legal, like a 50% deduction, whether you give it dollar for dollar or $4 to a dollar or whatever you do is still legal. Um, you know, it does sound like a lot like, but there are ways to get that 50% without doing dollar for dollar. So many, many strategies like along the way, but you know, you also shouldn't be punished for making a lot of money, you know, um, and, and, you know, there, there is a fair share of taxes and, and, you know, I'll tell you that directly. There's only so many strategies that make sense, you know, and then they don't like, they won't make sense because your tax brackets are, uh, better than your strategy. Yep. And, uh, it's going in with your eyes open and making sure that you're making intelligent decisions based off of the, the full understanding of the, uh, of, of what it is that you're doing. That's why you talk to a guy like Tyler, rather than just go straight to a promoter who's going to say, here's the, you know, invest in this, this is what you're going to get. No, they always say, talk to your tax <laughs> advisor. Here's why, because you want to have somebody that does it. And, this, and I don't do it day in and day out. Yeah. Tyler lives this, breathes it, eats it. Um, and, yeah, you know, like I said, we're just a little bit more active. Like, you know, we work with people, CPAs or whatever, you know, and, and understanding a strategy or understanding a certain deal. And, and it's just something you got to be comfortable with. So, um, you know, more than open to do that and happy to do that. Like, love doing that, actually. Uh, if I can't fill my day with golf, I would rather talk to people about tax mitigation, believe that or not. <laughs> All right, Tyler. Perfect. So like, subscribe, guys. Share this with anybody you think you will benefit.